Thanks for coming. Um, we're here today, we're seeking further public assistance in relation to the murder of 53-year-old Ian Lee. Um, Ian was located by a bush walker on the 26th of July, 2022, at the Hale Con Conservation Park, approximately two kilometres southeast of Williamstown. Uh, as I've stated previously, Ian had suffered uh, significant injuries. Um, and as a result, his murder has been declared a major crime. He was last seen on the 1st of March this year um, after leaving his home address on the 28th of February uh, at about 6 p.m. that evening. When he was last seen, it was about 2.40 a.m. on Fairley Avenue at Monica North. And at that time, he was walking uh, north on that location. Ian's belongings were subsequently located in a reserve at the end of Fairley Avenue. Um, that included a backpack, a wallet, keys, and his thongs. Um, those possessions were actually located in bushes at that location, and we don't believe that anything was taken from them. Today, we'll provide you a photograph of uh, his belongings, and also a close-up photograph of the backpack that he was carrying at the time. So today, we've actually searched Ian's home address um, we've seized a vehicle that has been forensically examined as well. And um, we've also submitted Ian's clothing for forensic examination. In relation to the search of his premises, it's normal with these investigations that we would search the home address or the last known locations of missing persons or persons that are suspected of murder. So I ask people not to jump to conclusions as to why that home address was actually searched. Uh, I've stated previously that Ian was known to frequent the Civic Park area and in particular around the Modbury area and Tea Tree Plaza uh, environs. He would often be seen walking with his dog, which was a blue healer named Jasper. Today we'll actually release photographs of Jasper, which may actually help people identify Ian uh, if they're unsure as to who he was with the previous uh, photographs that we've released. And hopefully that will help someone provide information as to uh, Ian's last known uh, whereabouts and also his movements prior to his death. We've conducted extensive CCTV analysis and collection uh, throughout the Modbury North area uh, in the vicinity of Civic Park, Fairley Avenue Reserve, uh, Tea Tree Plaza and uh, locations within that area. We know that about 1.04 a.m. on the 1st of February, we have, sorry, the 1st of March, we have two persons that are actually walking south out of Fairley Avenue Reserve, and we'd like to speak to those persons if, um, if they are known or if people know who they are. Also, at about 5.42 a.m. Um, on the following morning, that being the, the 2nd of March, at Fairley Reserve, where Ian's like, uh, belongings were located, we've now got CCTV of a person that's actually searching that morning in darkness with a torch in the area close to where his, his belongings were located. Um, we would really like to speak to that person that was in that area at the time as to whether they have uh, any knowledge of what may occur or may have occurred at that location in, in recent days. Also, um, on the 28th of July this year, we had a person contact Crime Stoppers. That person's provided quite specific detail to the Crime Stoppers website in relation to where Ian's remains could be located. That person's information is critical to the investigation of uh, Ian's murder, and we ask for that person uh, to come forward and contact police today, and we'll have uh, detectives from Major Crime available to speak to that person between 5 and 9 p.m. today. Also, Ian was known to frequent the Modbury Hotel, and also he was a, a very regular attendee at Ingle Farm Football Club. We know that Ian had a, a very large circle of friends. We're now asking for any of those friends that, he may, that may know whether um, he had relationships we're not aware of, or whether he was in conflict with other persons prior to the time of his death. We also ask those persons to contact Crime Stoppers uh, and speak to detectives this evening. In addition to that, um, <clears throat> I ask anyone that has knowledge of Ian's whereabouts or his movements prior to his death to come forward. We're, we're fully aware that people do have knowledge of what's occurred, and we now seek those people to come forward and assist the police investigation. I'm going to take any questions. 
the person with the torch, with that, that was seen, that's about 24 hours after the last nine sighting of him, is that correct? Correct, that's right. Um, and they're actually seen in the park, going through different areas of the park with a torch. The behaviour could be normal, but it could be unusual. But we would really like to speak to that person that uh, is in the CCTV that will be released today as to whether they know whether people uh, congregate in that reserve or what sort of movements occur through the Fairly Avenue Reserve. And the two people seen walking south, are they, they're not the same person? Do they have any similarities to the one? No, we don't know. Unfortunately, we have CCTV them walking through, but we can't identify them from the CCTV, and the CCTV is not of sufficient quality uh, at this time to be released. And in terms of the time frame, I think the last vision you showed was of uh, you were walking towards fairly. Correct. Um, are those people also in that vision? So no, they're not. So um, the two persons we don't know, or the two people we don't know whether they're males or females, but they're seen walking out of the reserve just after 1am, and we know that Ian is seen walking into the reserve at about 2.40. Um, so it's really to ascertain whether those people know whether there were people congregating in the reserve on that night, or what activity there was there. So is that CCTV from like the council CCTV? It's not the same, but court? No, um, we'll provide a copy of the CCTV today. It's a CCTV that's been seized from a premises, okay. or a house, in uh, yeah. Fairly Avenue, uh, right at the end of the cold center. And that person who rang up, did they ring up or did they submit an inquiry online? No, they've contacted Crime Stoppers online. Um, the information that they've advised us is critical to the investigation and uh, we believe that they could significantly, uh, you know, progress the investigation should they contact police. And it's really important that they contact police today so that we can speak to them and ascertain what they do no further. So they have some of the information which matches what you now know? I won't disclose exactly what they've said, but they do provide quite detailed uh, specifics about Ian and about where he may be located. And does this person have to tell their identity if they were to contact you? No. Um, as with anybody that wishes to contact Crime Stoppers or contact Major Crime, um, they can remain anonymous. If they believe their, uh, their safety is at risk or similar, um, we would take appropriate steps to ensure that person's safety as well. How long was that contact with that person being able to say whether it was a man or a woman? No, I can't. Um, because it's via the, uh, the internet, I can't tell you what sex it is. Has the further information about the people that were in the reserve that night shed any light on whether he was purposely perhaps going to meet somebody there? Or in, in relation to motive, um, there's still a lot of unanswered questions in relation to Ian's murder. And at this stage, we're keeping a very, very open mind as to what may have occurred to him. All we can say is that he has suffered a very violent death and uh, the motive at this stage, um, we will keep an open mind so that we can actually investigate the full facts. And it's still unclear whether he's um, the person who may or may not have killed him you was known to At this stage, um, there's nothing to suggest that um, this death is by people that are unknown to Ian. Um, but as I said, we have to keep an open mind, but the public shouldn't be alarmed at this stage because we believe um, that the people that have caused Ian's death are known to him. And the, just that car you seized from the house, was that his car? So that's a vehicle that's used at the premises. Um, and as I said earlier, with any of these investigations, we always go back and obviously the last known location where the person was seen and also where they, re they reside. It's essential that we thoroughly search and examine those addresses because there may just be something that assists us in the investigation that could progress the murder investigation. So I said, I don't want people to jump to conclusions as to why we've seized that vehicle or why we've searched that premises. Um, but it is, it's quite normal in these circumstances. Um, and the person you were seeing about 24 hours later searching in the area, do we know their gender? Um, no, we don't, um, but I would think it'd be fairly evident to anyone. It may be somebody who goes down there regularly, we don't know, but uh, from the footage it would be fairly evident to the person that we're doing it that they would know who it is. Are there any other items, you've recovered quite a few things back back from all of Yes. Uh, are there any other items still missing, outstanding? From, from what we know, um, where 
Dan's blinds located, it doesn't appear that anything's been stolen. And um, so therefore, that, that's one area of the motive that we obviously need to consider on each occasion. But it, it doesn't appear, his, his phone's been located at the park, his wallet's been located at the park, his backpack's been located at the, car, the park. So that anything that would regularly be stolen would have been gone, but it's all there. So there was nothing to indicate on the telephone that he was going to need someone, uh, whether it's through messages or calls leading up to the, 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 the his fate? Yeah. For operational reasons, I won't comment uh, in relation to any of that that we've undertaken. Okay, the password. 